Hey, I hope you're doing well. So how does one place a trailing stop loss in Python easily? Well, let me show you. So what do I do to make my life easier with all this process is that I use the CCXT library to do the authentication with the crypto exchange to fetch some information from the crypto exchange and more importantly actually place all the orders that I want. So here in this example today we're going to be using BitGet but really the power of CCXT is that it handles the API of hundreds of, of crypto exchanges. I will drop a link to their documentation in the description down below in case you need. I'll also put the link to this code so you can access it for free. And I'll also put a link to our comprehensive Python for Finance free course. So if you need to refresh your knowledge about Python or you want to learn about Python, you can check it out. Okay, so let me import this here. Why am I actually using importing JSON as well? Just for the authentic authentication here, you can see in this dictionary, I need to give API key secret password. So that's what you get from creating API keys on the account. If you're not familiar with all of this, I'll drop a, a and creating sub accounts and things like that. I'll drop a link to a video where I'll, I explain all of this. Anyway, so rather than putting these credentials that I would get from my API, keep putting them in the form of a string because this is sensitive information. So rather than showing that to you, what I'm doing is that I've put it in a JSON file and I'm simply importing that information and sticking it into this auth auth authentication dictionary. Great. So where do I put that dictionary in here? Let me actually run it. So what I'm doing here in this, what I'm creating this object, this variable bitget. So in this object bitget, what I have now is a the cry the CCXT an instance of the CCXT slash bitget client. So what is what does that mean? Well, it basically means that from the bitget variable, I'll be able to use all the methods provided by CCXT. So these fetch balance, amount to precision, I'll get to that in a second, create order, so what we need to place the orders, etc. Okay, great. So as a double check to know that the authentication worked fine and it's probably the right account that we want to be placing things on, what we can do is fetch the balance here and print, the, print it. Here I'm just making sure that I am as you, we will be using the examples of the future um, future market, I'm making sure the balance that I'm retrieving is of the futures market with as margin coin, the USDT. Okay, so I can see here that on the account I'm using for this tutorial, I have 90 USDT free and zero used, meaning basically I haven't entered any positions or put limit orders or whatever. So use is equal to zero. Great. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do before placing our stop loss is actually to place a entry, enter a position. Well, it could be placing a limit order or placing a market order, and a market order will automatically open the position. So for simplicity, I'm just putting market order here. So you can see symbol. I'm high. I'm putting in variables all this information just to make it more clear. So the symbol we'll be using for this example is link. Entry type, I said market, entry side buy, meaning I'll be entering a long. If I put sell, if I had put sell, it means I would enter a short and entry amount. I'll get to this in a second. I just want to say that all these variables, where am I putting them? I am ending putting them in this create order method here. As you can see, symbol, entry side, blah, blah, blah. So we were getting to entry amount. Why am I using this little method amount to precision symbol two? So that does mean we'll be entering with, we'll be entering a long of size of two links. Well, here for two, it doesn't really, I wouldn't need to do that, but more in an algo trading context, you know that, well, you actually, I'm sure it must have happened to you that you put a number on the web interface and it said uh, this, it's, something that an error saying that the precision is not what it wants basically is saying this what happens is that you always have a restriction on the amount of digits of on the numbers that you're giving whether it is an amount a price whatever there's always some restrictions maybe it's only 
five digits. It depends on the, the symbol, the pair that you're trading, but whatever. So within an algo trading context, maybe you're doing computations before and you don't have full control on the amount of digits that will come out of this. And so to avoid any errors and because you want to actually enter the position, this little conversion will ensure that it takes the closest number that the, the exchange accepts. So again, for two is stupid, but if you didn't know the number here and the precision exactly, the digits, you can just use this amount of precision. Great. One final thing, you can see that after all these, you have the params dictionary here that comes in. So the, those are our more special parameters belonging to the specific crypto exchange. So what we have here, we are just putting margin mode isolated. As you can see, what I have here is isolated 1-1 one, one for this example. Well, it's typically why am I doing this is that sometimes if you've never set via your the API, the, the margin mode or things like that, these orders creating an order like this might trigger back the, the crypto exchange to go back to the default margin mode and and um and leverage which is generally not isolated one one maybe it's cross 10 or something like that so just by putting here that i want to stick to margin mode isolated it will at the when i'm placing the order i won't have any surprises where this gets changed okay so there you go so I think I've covered all of this. What I can do, I'm just putting the here, you see, rather than just doing bid, get, create order, I'm doing order equal bid, get, create order. So in order, I will get back the information that the, the crypto exchange sends when it's placing this order. So you know what? Let me just execute this. We hear, I'm not sure you'll hear the sound, but it means that the position was opened and you can see that I have the information here. You might need that in a trade, algo trading context. Anyways, what do I see? Indeed, here we see that we've entered a position. And if I go to positions, what do I see? I do see that I have entered a long. Great. So all this is done. But what we are really wanting to do today is now to place our trailing stop loss. Just a short pause in all of this to give you three important information. Well, the first one is not. It's just to say, if you're enjoying this and this is valuable for you, a like and a subscription, you know, it always helps. Second information, if you have any questions or whatever, comments down below or join our community Discord. And lastly, if you don't have an account on BitGet yet and want to try them out, we have a registration link down below that will give you a 10% discount on your trading fees. Cool. Back to our stuff. So what do I do? Well, you can see I'm creating another order, but now quite importantly, what changes is in parameters. Just note, I'm doing, I'm sticking the same symbol, but what is important is that now I'm say, saying that this should be a, a, a short because what I really want to do is I want to close my long. So what you typically do is enter short to close the long. But what's very important is that in this special params dictionary that I have here, I'm putting this keyword reduce only to true. This is to make the API understand that what I'm doing here is not just opening another position, is that I'm closing a position. I'm closing a, I'm creating an order that will, that should close a position that is already opened. So there you go, reduce it true. Great. Other, other things here, well, it is specifically the settings of the trailing stop loss that I want to set. So the trigger price, so the price at which the trailing stop loss will be active. So here I'm doing, I'm showing you also that, why is this? It should be, I made a mistake here. So what I'm giving here is a price. So I shouldn't be doing amount to precision. I should be doing price to, to precision. So what I'm saying here, I think what, I haven't shown that yet. The price of, of link at the moment is around 10. So what I'm saying is that want, I want my trailing stop loss to become active when the price hits 12. And once this trigger, this trailing stop loss is active, when should the stop loss, so when should this order really execute itself? Well, I'm giving a trailing percent. So I'm giving the trailing to be 5%, this trailing amount here. Great. So same thing, create order, whatever, print. So if I do this, let me just simply run this. So this worked fine. And now what we can see 
is that here in open orders, what do we have? If we go in the training stop loss section, we indeed have our training stop loss. So you can see what I was saying here. It's not written open short. It's indeed written close long. This is thanks to this reduce only true that I put a true parameter. So you see type trailing stop a market trailing stop triggered if the price is equal or goes above 12 USDT and the callback rate. So the percentage price with respect to the trigger price, when should that trading stop loss execute? That is the 5% that we asked here. Great. Now, if you want to know how to place a entry order with a take profit and a stop loss directly included in the order, all that in Python, then that video covers it. And on the other hand, if you're interested in knowing how to create and run your own fully customizable Python trading bot, that video is for you. Great. Thanks for watching. Happy trading and take care.